the suicide of our once great nation, Australia. Ah, Australia, the land down under, where we once rode high on the shape's back, struck gold, literally, and built a country with a backbone stronger than a roo's hind legs. But let me tell you, mates, we've gone from being the lucky country to being the punchline of a very, very dark joke. And here's the thing. Most of us are too distracted by TikTok celebrity gossip and some influencer's humongous boobs or six-pack abs to even notice it's happening. Did anyone mention boobs? So let's have a yarn, because if this ship's going down, I want you to at least know who's steering us towards the iceberg. The beginning of the end, how they took God out and sold us hedonism. Let's start at the beginning, or as close as we can get, without falling into some black hole of existential dread. At some point, someone, and by someone, I mean the elites, decided that God, God was passe. Yep, that old school belief system that helped build Australia into the strong, freedom-loving country it was. Gone. You know, that same country where everyone died to come to. Tossed out like last week's fish and chips wrapper. Suddenly, morality was labelled as oppressive. And any mention of family values made you a bigot. Meanwhile, the same mob telling you to drop God like a bad habit were pushing sex, drugs and rock and roll. Or whatever the kids listen to nowadays. I don't know. As the new trinity of human fulfilment. And don't believe me. Look around. When was the last time you heard anyone seriously talk about family or church? Nah, mate. These days, it's all about who's swiping right and what's trending on Netflix. They didn't just remove God from the picture. They replaced him with celebrities, porn and reality TV. And you lapped it up. I mean, who needs eternal salvation when you've got Love Island on demand and free porn in your pocket, right? Look, I love a bit of entertainment as much as the next bloke, but when you build a society on hedonism, don't be surprised when it crumbles faster than an overcooked pavlova. Climate guilt, the biggest con job of the century. Now, while the socialists or socialists were distracting you with a sexual revolution and telling you that church was for idiots, they threw the climate guilt trip on your back. The planet's dying, they said. And you're the reason, mate. Yep, you. Driving your car to work, daring to use plastic straws, and God forbid having a bloody grouse Aussie steak. You're killing the planet, they scream. As they hop onto their private jets, sip champagne at climate summits and chuck their gold-plated waste straight into the ocean like it's a scene from some twisted Bond villain lair. I mean, the hypocrisy is enough to make you choke on your overpriced avocado toast. Do they still eat that shit, do they? Okay. They push climate doom while they profit from it, guilt-tripping you into thinking that you... Driving your kids to footy practice is the problem. All the while, multinational corporations are dumping more waste than a toddler with a sugar high in a crash. But yeah, your reusable shopping bags are really going to save the planet. Keep telling yourself that. And here's the cherry on top. They told you the world's population is too high. Can't support it, they say. Say they make the cost of living impossible, locking you into a life where you can barely afford rent or a tent, let alone kids. You want to start a family? Good luck with that, mate. Hope you enjoyed being told by some smug expert that it's irresponsible to have kids in this economy while you slave away to pay for the privilege of merely existing. Population replacement, the final nail in the coffin. As if getting rid of God and strangling you with climate guilt wasn't enough, they've gone one better. 
They've opened the floodgates and brought in people from nations alien to our Western heritage. And before you get your knickers in a twist, no, this isn't some xenophobic rant about immigrants. For fuck's sakes, my parents came to this beautiful country. I'm all for for a fair go, but let's be bloody honest. There's a difference between welcoming new Aussies and actively dismantling the culture that made this country great in the first place. For centuries, Australia's core values were rooted in freedom, mateship and a Christian ethos. That doesn't mean every Aussie was a churchgoer or wore a cross around their neck, but those values permeated our institutions, our way of life and our sense of community. And now, well, those values are being eroded brick by brick, by pricks, by ideologies that have nothing in common with our own history and culture. We've opened the door to people who, let's face it, don't give a fuck, I mean, don't give a damn about it, preserving Western traditions. And why should they? It's not their history, not their way of life. So who will keep the torch burning for Australia's unique culture? Who will stand up for the values that gave us our freedom? I'll tell you who won't. The people coming in from countries that don't share a belief in freedom of speech, the separation of church and state, or even basic human rights as we know them. The cold hard truth is we're being replaced, and not by accident. It's a deliberate, calculated move to dilute our cultural identity, to make us more compliant, more divided, and easier to control. And you are letting it happen while you post selfies and cheer on the latest reality TV train wreck. Wake up, Australia. Useful idiots. A Soviet term for a reason. Now, if you're sitting there still thinking none of this is part of a bigger plan, mate, I have bad news for you. You've been had. You've been led down the garden path by the same mob that told you to care more about plastic straws than the fact that they're selling your country out from under you. And while you're distracted by whatever hot button issue they've conjured up this week, which bathroom someone should use or who said what on Twitter, they're reshaping your entire society and not in a way that benefits you. The Soviets had a term for people like this, useful idiots. The people who buy into the propaganda and carry out the dirty work of their own destruction without even realising it. They're the ones who parrot the talking points, who nod along as their rights and freedoms are stripped away, all the while thinking they're on the right side of history. You see them every day, the social media warriors, the virtue signalers, the ones who take offence at everything but don't give a damn about what really matters. Final thoughts. Where do we go from here? So here we are, mates, standing at the edge of the cliff, looking down at the smoke in ruins of a country that used to stand for something. The only question left is, are you going to wake up and fight for it? Or are you going to be another useful idiot? Clutching your carbon neutral soy latte and hashtags as the country burns around you. I, for one, am bloody sick of it. I'm sick of the hypocrisy, the lies, and the outright destruction of everything that makes Australia great. This isn't some doom and gloom prophecy, it's the truth. We've been led to the edge by people who don't give a fuck about you, your family, or this country's future. And the worst part? They told you it was happening the entire time. You just weren't listening. But here's the thing, it's not too late. We can still turn this around. We can start by recognising the lies we've been sold and standing up for the things that really matter. Family, community, freedom and a future where Australia doesn't look like some globalist dystopia but instead remains a strong, free country we know and love. So wake up, stand up and don't let the bastards win. 
Well, that's the rant, folks. If you're still here, if you haven't thrown your phone across the room or unsubscribed because I dare to challenge your worldview, thank you. There's hope for us yet. As always, keep fighting the good fight. Cheers, Senator Papa Hatsikara Lambrus.